everybody and welcome to Handmade Studio. I'm Cheryl Han Woodlock. I'm here today to talk about ground. You've made your mosaic and you have no idea what to colour it. Stay tuned and I'll help you out. Our grouting session today the tools that you are going to need we have got a bag for mixing up our grout I'll explain about that later I have my grout it's a light color grout you can use any brand but I've just got an Ardex one today I've got some oxides up to you what color you are going to choose for your mosaic I've got blue oxides at the moment these are cement oxides we put them into our grout. These are hobby sizes. You can go to Bunnings and they do sell cement oxide. So they are the same. This one is from Smalty Australia and from Mosaic Bazaar. It's up to you what you will use. You will need a container for mixing your grout in. You will need the dust mask. A toothbrush that helps me clean everything up. I've got a spoon to do my quantities. I also have an old sock for wiping my mosaic down. I've also got a bucket of water beside me, so if I get dirty, I can start cleaning up. And I also use a vacuum cleaner, and we'll talk about that soon. So see you. Let's get started with our grouting. I've got my dust mask and I've got my grout. I'm also going to be using a measuring cup. If I run out of this color, I know how to remake it. The other important thing is if I really love this color, I can redo it again because I know exactly how much I used. I'm going to be putting this grout into a plastic bag and I'm going to show you why. Dust mask on. And I'm going to do half a cup of a grout. It doesn't have to be exact, but that's half a cup or close enough to. I'm going to put it into the bag. The next thing I'm going to use is a quantity of this uh, blue oxide from Smalty Australia. And I'm going to put just one teaspoon, one teaspoon of A mix that's why you have your plastic bag it means I can mix the quantity of blue through this without creating a lot of dust and get an even finish we need to make sure this is mixed through properly if it's not we're not going to get a true color of what the color grout will look like now I'm going to mix up just a little bit to see what the color looks like because the dry powder is going to look very different to when it's wet. Then it's going to look very different to when it's dry again. So let's have a look. And this is my test. Just put some water in and mix it with a knife. It is hard to mix up a small quantity, but if I do a large quantity, I'm going to waste a lot. So it just takes a little bit of time to get this mixed together. Now I've almost got that mixed up. There are no granules of white anymore. Before there was a little bit of white in there. There's no more white, it's quite even. Also, blue is a very strong color and I did have little blue streaks running through. This is now really, really even and I'm going to test it. This is now a toothpaste-like consistency. It's not too runny. I don't like runny grout. Some people do, but I prefer not to. I find that if you make your grout too runny, when it dries, it can crack, so be careful. This is cement sheeting. I'm going to pop this grout onto my cement sheet. It's not going to stick. I'm just going to let it dry. 
When this ground dries, it will be lighter. It will change in color again. So I want to make sure it's the right color. So this is the grout without the water added to it. This is the grout that I dried and then powdered back. And this is the grout wet. So when it's wet, it is a lot darker. Don't be deceived, make sure you use it dry. I'm now going to sprinkle dry grout into my area to make sure it is the right color that I want to use. When I look at this from a distance, I can't see the lines very well. I think my grout needs to be stronger in color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another half teaspoon of blue oxide. Let's have a look. It's not much darker, but I think that'll work. Before I actually mosaic and mix up my grout, I'm now going to vacuum this up. I like working with a vacuum cleaner. It means there's less dust I make. Now I can actually grout, start grouting and mixing up my grout. I'm only going to do small batches so I can do little bits at a time. So while it's drying, I can then mix up my next batch. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the quantities that I put in. Now this is on my plastic bag, I won't have to try and remember. And we just add water. When you look at this, there are still some white lumps in there, which means that the blue oxide hasn't gone all the way through. So I need to make sure that I get all of this really well mixed. I have just enough water in this. I can now take off my mask because it's no longer making dust. It still has these white flecks. It is quite stiff still, so I'm just going to keep mixing. As I mix this, it's actually becoming softer, more flexible. I like to have my grout very stiff because in this, I've actually got a few wide gaps and I don't want my grout to crack. If I made it very runny, when it grout dries, it may crack. So by having a little stiffer, I'm going to do a little bit of insurance against the grout cracking. Now I let that sit for five minutes. Five minutes has passed and it's now time to start putting the grout on. The other tool I'm going to use today is my squeegee. This is a foam squeegee. It's got a little tip at the front and it's got these tips at the back. I'm going to show you how I use this. I'm going to use my squeegee and I'm going to press down. So I'm going to stand up and as I'm pressing down, I'm actually going to work the grout into all the cracks in the tiles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down. I'm going to use my fingers around this edge because I don't want the blue on my stones. So I'm just going to do that by hand, pushing it down and making sure that grout is squashed in. Very, very important. You squash that grout in. Now I can continue on, mix another batch because that's empty and I can do this side now. This is now ready to put in. I 
and can use my trowel again to push down. It saves my fingers and it makes my job a little bit easier. When using the trowel, I don't use the pointy end. I use the end where my handle is and that's where that weight goes. So I'm pushing down. The pointy end is for when I want to get into those little grooves. I can actually push down into those little areas that have more detail. Now I've just taken off the excess and I've put it back into the jar. This I can now start to use my hands on. So I'm just going to go around the edges Now grout is not very strong, it's just filling in, so you cannot have your gaps too wide. I'm going to do the edge with just the grout. I'm now going to let this sit and become a little bit dry. It's going to get this dusty feel to it. Then I can start wiping it back. While I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm actually going to clean my trowel. If I don't clean it, this is going to stain. So I'm going to use a scrubbing brush, soap and water in my bucket. This is now clean, which means next time I go to use it, it's not going to contaminate any other color mosaic that I'm going to do. When I wipe this back, I'm going to get a bit of dust into my other area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just mask this off with some sticky tape. It's not going to protect it 100% but it's going to stop a lot of the dust getting in. Now for those of you at home that are really quite dirty when you work and that's okay. What I've done is I've got newspaper and I'm going to put my work on top of the newspaper. That means as I'm cleaning, it will not go everywhere. And when I finish, I can just roll this up and throw it away. So it does make your job a little bit easier if you want to do it that way. This is about ready to clean now. So what I'm going to do is if you have a look, this little areas that are starting to look a little bit powdery. So that is perfect. We don't want it to get too dry. Otherwise the grout gets really firm and it won't rub off easily. The next thing I have is a sock. I'm going to put the sock on and it's a dry sock. I do this dry. I don't use a wet cloth. And the reason I don't use a wet cloth personally is I find it actually takes out a lot of the grout from the grooves. Also, some when you work very wet, you're actually adding more moisture to your grout, which makes it harder to clean. Now, this is really dirty, so I'm just going to pull that up and I'm going to use the next clean part of the cloth. I'm going to vacuum up all that dust. Now I'm going to use a toothbrush because all of my rocks and my shells are hidden. taken a while it's taken me around about half an hour but this piece is almost finished the grouting has almost been done and what I have to do now is once it's drier I'm going to go over it with a dab cloth of methylated spirits and that will wipe off the lost last of the dust I can now peel this off Hi everybody, if you liked what we did today with the coloured grout, could you please hit that like button, also ring that bell and subscribe. I'm Cheryl Hanwoodlock from Handmade Studio saying thank you for watching, we'll see you next time, bye.